Humbert, the hungry baby. Oh my! exclaimed the midwife when she delivered the baby. It was the biggest tot the lady had ever seen in her many years of delivering them. He plopped onto the floor of the hospital like a beached whale. Oh my word! cried the father. How had this skinny bean of a man helped create such a ginormous baby? Is he beautiful? asked the baby's anxious mother. She couldn't see her newborn child from where she was lying on the bed. Well, you know what they say. Big is beautiful, replied the father. Yes? He definitely is big. How big exactly? When the pair had managed to heave the enormous lump off his mother, father asked, Darling, whatever should we call him? Humbert, she said. Little Humbert. Little Humbert? asked father, a hint of sarcasm in his voice. The new parents had brought a pretty pram to the hospital in which to take their baby home. However, as soon as Humbert was lowered into it, the pram was flattened. Crunch! The pair hijacked a forklift truck so they could get their offspring home. They just managed to squeeze him through the front door. On seeing the size of him, Marmalide, the family cat, dashed through the cat flap. Somehow, the parents hauled him up the stairs. As soon as they lowered him into his cot, he burst out of it. Shards of wood exploded across his nursery, smashing everything in sight. The room looked as if a bomb had hit it. Where's he going to sleep now? asked father. In our bed, of course, replied mother. So their bedroom became Humbert's nursery, and the baby sprawled out on their double bed. Mother slept on the sofa downstairs, and father had to sleep standing up in the cupboard. Not that the pair got any sleep. If they stopped feeding their new baby milk for more than a minute, Humbert would scream the house down. <coughs> Such was the noise that the walls would shake, the roof would rattle and the windows would... <coughs> One bottle of milk was never enough. As soon as Humbert had his lips around the first bottle, the second would have to be filled, then the next and the next and the next. The baby would only stop to do one thing, burp. <coughs> Guzzling all that milk down, Humbert began expanding at an alarming rate. When there was no milk left in the house, Humbert would wail for food again. <coughs> if he wasn't immediately bought something to eat, he would roll out of bed. And he would lollop down the stairs like a giant slug trying to break dance. One night, he demolished the entire contents of the fridge in seconds. A whole trifle, a huge block of cheese, a foot-long salami sausage, egg after egg after egg, and a pack of butter, including the wrapping in which it came. In the morning, Humbert had his innocent face on. However, his burp gave him away. <coughs> it was a cheesy, eggy, buttery, meaty, trifly burp that flew straight into his parents' face like a hurricane. Upon seeing the carnage in the kitchen, father was furious. I don't believe it. There's not a thing left in here to eat. Well, little Humbert's a growing boy, replied mother. Growing? If it carries on like this, he'll be the size of an elephant by Christmas, snapped father. I am putting a padlock on the fridge. But what if little Humbert gets peckish during the night? Peckish? exclaimed father. Our son is eating us out of the house and home. I'm going to move all the food we've got left out of his reach. As mother fumed, father did just that. He moved everything in the larder to the top shelf which he could barely reach himself. There was no way Humbert could get his hands on the biscuits, cereals and cakes, or so his father thought. It wasn't long before Humbert was wailing to be fed again. <laughs> that evening, mother gave her baby even more milk than usual, pint after pint after pint. 
The woman cut the bottom of the bottle so more milk could be poured in without interrupting Humbert's feed. Hurry! Ordered Mother. I'm trying! Snapped back Father as he ran to fetch yet another carton. When the man stumbled, running up the stairs, and dropped a carton, it burst onto the floor. <coughs> Humbert wailed. Then he simply ate the bottle. My goodness, he must be full now, remarked Father. <coughs> night, night, little Humbert, said Mother, planting a kiss on her baby's forehead. Humbert did a big, wet, milky burp right in his mother's face. <coughs> Father smirked. Come on, darling. It's been an exhausting day, said the man. Let's try to get some sleep. Mother lay on the sofa, and Father shut himself in the cupboard. They both fell asleep. <coughs> Moments later, Humbert wailed <coughs> as his parents were asleep. No one came running, so the big baby rolled himself out of the bed. He poured down the stairs and slithered into the kitchen. As the food had all been placed out of reach, the baby had to find a way to grab it. First, he tried bouncing. Humbert was perfectly round, but he was just too heavy to become airborne. Next, he reached for a cooking pot to stand on, but he still couldn't reach any food. So the baby poured over a thick cookbook and placed that on top of the pot. Still, he could not reach the food, so he dragged poor Marmalade over by her tail. <coughs> screeched the cat. Humbert placed the cat on top of the pile. He stepped on her with his big, fleshy foot. <coughs> Humbert's eyes widened as he finally saw what he had been looking for. Food. Glorious food. The big baby was still standing on top of the cat. As his feet pressed down on the poor creature, she let out a series of loud yelps. It was as if he was playing the bad pipes. Before long, Humbert had grabbed every can, box and packet of food. Then he began his fantastic feast. First, Humbert ate his own body weight in marshmallows. That is a lot of marshmallows. <coughs> then he gobbled down a variety pack of cereals, boxes and all. <coughs> Next, the baby set to work on the tinned puddings, rice pudding, pineapple chunks, chocolate sponge... Being a baby, Humbert didn't know how to use a tin opener, so he ate the tins too. <coughs> Next, the baby found a large jar of mustard. It smelled funny. Humbert poked his fingers in and grabbed a mouthful. <coughs> like most children, Humbert didn't like the taste of mustard at all. He spat it out of his mouth <coughs> and hurled the jar across the kitchen. A streak of mustard was splashed to the floor. Humbert desperately needed to eat something to take the taste away. The big baby jumped down and looked around the kitchen. There was not a scrap of food left to eat. He had scoffed the lot. The larder was empty. The fridge was empty. Humbert licked the wall to take the hot mustard off his tongue, but it still tasted off. Poor Marmalade hadn't liked being trodden on one bit and was now curled up in her basket. Humbert looked at Marmalade. Marmalade looked back at Humbert. Could he? Should he? Would he? <coughs> yes, he would. <coughs> the poor cat was gobbled down in one gulp. The next morning, mother and father went to the kitchen to make breakfast. As he strode in in his pyjamas, Father slipped on the mustard. Ow! He shot across the kitchen floor and ended up covered in the stuff. Whoosh! Oh, are you a silly man? exclaimed Mother. I didn't leave it there, he protested, vainly trying to rub the mustard off his pyjamas. In fact, I put this with everything else on the top shelf. Out of reach of you-know-who. Suspicious, Father opened the door of the larder. 
Once again, there's not a thing left to eat in the house. We are going to starve. The man dashed upstairs to the bedroom, and as usual, Humbert was sprawled out on what used to be his parents' double bed. After his latest midnight feast, he had expanded during the night and was now getting too big for the room. <coughs> Went the baby. It was so loud that the house shook. Out of the baby's mouth came a giant orange fur ball. I don't believe it, shouted father. He's eaten the cat! Mother rushed upstairs and burst into the room. No! Look, said father, indicating the fur ball. Well, silly old marmalade must have wandered into poor little Humbert's mouth during the night, mused mother. She wasn't a fly, and M Marmalade was a cat, a big furry cat. Burp. It was a burp that could make an ancient city crumble to the ground. Mother and father had to cling on to each other to make sure they didn't fall over. The naughty cat has given my poor little Humbert indigestion. Quickly, father, call an ambulance. Father did what he was told. He rushed out of the bedroom to the downstairs telephone. Hello? Uh, yes, I need an ambulance, please. It's my baby son. He's he's just he's eating a cat. No, the cat wasn't cooked. It was it was raw. <coughs> Came a cry from upstairs. This was followed by a thunderous <laughs> And I think he may have just eaten my wife. Yes, Raw, please come as fast as you can. Father slammed the telephone down and dashed up the stairs. Opening the bedroom door, he saw that his wife's feet were just poking out of his baby son's mouth. Humbert munched on his mother's pink fluffy slippers. Blech. Right in front of father's eyes. Humbert was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It was as if the baby was a lilo being inflated. The bed collapsed under his weight. <coughs> Unsteadily, Humbert rose to his feet. The baby was now taller than father and his head hit the ceiling. A blizzard of plaster filled the room. Through the cloud, father could make out his baby son advancing towards him, gobbling up everything in sight. A shelf of books, <coughs> an armchair, <coughs> the dressing table. <coughs> Panic flashed across father's face. In that moment, he realised something, something terrible. He was next. <coughs> the ambulance was near. Father had to get out of the house, and fast. He slid down the banister Whoosh! and reached the front door. Frantically, he started unlocking it. Looking back, he glimpsed Humbert hurtling down the stairs on his giant bottom, sending pictures on the wall flying. Smash! Wallop! Bang! Wallop. If Humbert didn't eat his father, he was sure to flatten him. Still in his mustard-soaked pyjamas, the man dashed out of the front door, slamming it behind him. That didn't stop Humbert. Oh no. The baby smashed through the front wall of the house. <coughs> Sending bricks tumbling through the air, they fell to the ground all around father. <coughs> With the front wall gone, the whole house began to crumble <coughs> and collapsed to the ground <coughs> in an explosion of dust and debris. Father ran and hid behind a bush. Nina, Nina, Nina. The ambulance screeched to a halt outside what was left of the family home. As soon as it had stopped, Humbert lumbered over to it. He picked up the ambulance with ease. Arr! Screamed the ambulance driver as he leaped out of the door, landing on the ground with a thud. <laughs> he looked up in horror as the giant baby crushed the ambulance with his bare hand. <laughs> Humbert was hungry again. 
he took a humongous bite out of the ambulance. <coughs> and another. <coughs> until he'd swallowed it down. <coughs> Father was still hiding behind the bush, but decided it would be safer to make a run for it. He raced down the street, but the giant baby thundered after him. Each step was like an earthquake. Humbert grabbed a passing poodle and ate that. Bleh. The little old lady out walking the poodle didn't let go of the lead, so she was gobbled up too. <coughs> Father ran and ran. Still, the giant baby chased after him. A tree was upended and munched into a pulp. Bleh. Then... A double-decker bus was gobbled up. Bleh. Bleh. Next, a squad of police cars raced down the road. They stopped in formation to create a roadblock. One by one, the cars were tossed up in the air and caught in the baby's mouth like peanuts. Bleh. Humbert grew bigger and bigger and bigger. The more he ate... He was now the size of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Father ran across the bridge to the city. There he hoped that the baby could not catch him. However, the city just meant more things for Humbert to eat. Streetlights, statues, cars, lorries. Even a fire engine was gobbled up in one gulp. <coughs> up ahead, Father spotted a very tall building. It must have been a thousand floors high. Right at the top, he was sure to be out of reach of his ravenously hungry baby son. There was a glass lift at the side of the building. Father frantically pressed the button for floor 1000 and began travelling up at speed. In the safety of the lift, the man breathed a sign of relief. Ping! The lift jolted as it reached the very top of the building. The door slid open and Father rushed out onto the roof. When he looked down, he saw that the giant baby was scaling the building. No! screamed Father. <laughs> the man turned around. A police helicopter was buzzing overhead. The pilot leaned out with a loud hailer. Giant baby fin, please make your way down to street level and stop eating everything. Humbert reached out to grab the helicopter. He swatted it like a fly. As it began falling to the ground, the giant baby grabbed the helicopter and ate it. In no time, Humbert had climbed to the top of the building. Father was trapped. The baby's ginormous hand reached onto the roof and scooped up the man. Don't eat me, he pleaded. I'm your father. But the baby just smiled baring his gums. Yeah! Screamed the man as he disappeared into the baby's mouth. But the baby spat him out. Yeah! The mustard! exclaimed Father, scrambling to his feet on the roof of the building. Slipping over on the spicy sauce had saved his life. Just then, three fighter jets whizzed past. <laughs> Don't shoot, shouted Father. All we need to do is coat every man, woman and child in the world with mustard and then we can all be fine. The baby reached out and grabbed one of the fighter jets. He munched it down. Burr. And another. Burr. The pilot of the third jet started to fly off at speed. Humbert reached to grab it. As he did, he lost his balance. No! screamed Father as the big baby tumbled to the ground. <coughs> Humbert, the hungry baby, was no more. So what is the moral of this story? It's very simple. However hungry you are, never try to eat three fighter jets in one sitting. Two are more than enough.